Welcome, guys. Uh, my name is Zoran, and the whole way it's because I'm an Orthodox priest. Uh, yeah, I am in the wrong place in the wrong time. Uh, I spent my uh, professional education uh, learning to be a priest. I studied Orthodox seminary, uh, then switched to uh, Faculty of Theology Science in Skopje, but I ended up writing PhD code because it's something that makes me happy. And yeah, uh, I don't, uh, how to say, uh, I find something together when I cannot find some solution about my issues in the co community, I ask God for help. So uh, he'll uh, always fix my issues. Uh, today I will speak about uh, Laravel and Docker and what is the benefit of using, uh, thank you. What is the benefit of using uh, Docker as application and as well as Laravel? We all I presume that nobody here is uh, somebody that have no clue what is uh, Laravel as an uh, application. But let us um, start from the beginning and yeah, I have some uh, old presentation here so I can reuse it. Uh, yeah, open. Okay, this old for you. Let me find play. Me and presentations are not going hand to hand, but let me find how it's how is it pushed over shoulder. Ah, here it is finally. No. <laughs> Who can help me? Yeah, I'll give you a slide on that you. I bet that's not good at that, you. <laughs> oh. I will probably go back to just this space, did it no point now. Can God help okay. us, please? Finally. Thank you, God. No <laughs> 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 problem, no problem. So, um, we are talking about Docker and Laravel as a whole uh, unity. Uh, yeah, just is unity, but however, Laravel and Docker are unity together. So uh, Laravel is a framework that is used for rapid development, and uh, it's uh, with the biggest community in the world. We have a lot of better frameworks than Laravel, for example, Symfony or Yi, but uh, everything that you want to find for free and the most tutorial and the most community we have for Laravel. Uh, and Docker is a platform developed to make our life easier that is for uh, virtualization and making uh, stand-up um, applications uh, reusable and you have one environment for everything. So uh, somebody cannot, cannot complain that uh, I'm missing some kind of package or I'm missing some kind of module in the PAB uh, service with uh, Docker, everybody can have the same environment and the beauty of it is that it's working everywhere. So uh, regardless of uh, the platform that you're using, uh, it's uh, Windows, God forbidden, or it's uh, Linux or Mac, uh, it's working correctly. I am not sure about Windows, but uh, I think that it's working on Windows as well. So, uh, yeah, I use 90% uh, of my time use uh, uh, Linux. I use Mac to be sincere, but... Uh, no, no, Windows, 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 yeah, the, in the backend, yeah, they are using uh, Linux because it's uh, initially built for Linux, not for, not for Visit, but never mind. Okay, uh, let's start, start for, uh, uh, for Laravel. So uh, Laravel gives us an uh, opportunity uh, to rapid develop and to use a lot of uh, predefined code, predefined uh, packages to make our life easier. But how the times prevails and the history, we have a problem that not everybody can start working with some application out of the box. 
because uh, when you're a new guy in the company and you have some kind of onboarding process, 90% uh, of the time we said, let us set up the working environment. So what kind of application the team before you is using for creating some kind of application, what you need to install in your PC, uh, on your working uh, machine, so you can be up to date and can work together with everybody else. That's the beauty of uh, Docker. Before Docker, we was using uh, uh, Homestead, we use uh, Vagrant, we use uh, uh, some, God forbid, or some other uh, application. But every time we need to set up something plus or minus some kind of package that something is missing in the platform and uh, everybody have issue with it. But when Docker come in the picture, it fix our issue globally because you can specify one Docker file, set up it correctly, and just share with everybody else and they can run the application with only one command. Start working on your project. So uh, Docker as a platform is for developing and sharing and running application inside a uh, closed bucket that it's a very low performance. Uh, you can set up a virtual machine with Docker that runs on 100 megabytes of RAM memory and it will run. Then if you want to uh, rescale that application in some other platform. You can just copy and paste the file and rerun there, and it will work because everything that it needs to run properly is inside the container. It's a closed uh, platform that has everything that it needs inside in uh, itself. Oh, uh, we can uh, we can talk about Laravel to the roof and down, but. Uh, the most uh, beauty part of uh, Laravel is that it's uh, show people uh, easy way how to write PHP code. When we start, when I start uh, working as a PHP developer, there was no framework. I think Zend was only present in the uh, uh, the circus, but uh, there was no other easy framework to use. So everything was done manually. Now. Thanks to Laravel and some other frameworks in the market, uh, us as a developers, it makes our life very easy, because 90% of uh, uh, stuff that you need to do now it's working out of the out of the box. For example, uh, I will go outside of presentation to be sincere. Let me exit show. Okay. And I will share something uh, on GitHub. It's an older project of mine just to, to share what is happening now and how the stuff are done 20 years ago. When we try to create a pagination, for example, so to count how many posts do you want to be returned back from some uh, 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 for some database, from some table in the database. Uh, in the early days, when we do everything manually, let me just find that. Just a second, sorry, 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 sorry. A lot of projects. Show more. Yeah, something like this that it's older than me. For example, in time when I started working with PHP, if you want to create a pagination, give or take, it was a script that has 100 and plus lines of code. So you first you need to select everything, to divide with the number of posts you want to show, to make a, a order list, uh, to make the buttons, to make the turn back buttons and functions and everything else. And now when you have, for example, uh, 
some kind of, uh, uh, I will open some other project that has some models, uh, to open some For example, here in, in Laravel today, and you want to show number of posts for something, you can just type paginate and framework with the number of posts, of course, inside. And the framework in the backend maybe will do the same code, but uh, for you as a user, it's very easy to do what you want. And you don't force your brain to think about anything in the backend. For me, that's wrong approach to be sincere because 90% of uh, newcomers today have the, uh, now I know how to start it, uh, have the same issue because they learn how to use Laravel, but they forgot how PHP works. So be aware when you're using P uh, Laravel, click on the class, go inside, the method, see what is happening in the backend so you know what the framework does in the backend. Now you can know the easy way, but it's good to know how to do it manually because if you don't have a framework, you're still in the end of the day a PHP developer because here everybody uh, of, of us in call of ourselves that we are PHP developers, not Laravel developers. We are not Symfony developers. We are PHP in the end of the day. Uh, everything's ar it's going around PHP, not uh, around uh, Laravel. Okay, so uh, that's about uh, Laravel. What uh, Laravel brings us, for example, it's an um, easy way to manage um, connections, secure platform. We have Eloquent as a platform that um, uh, make our life easier to write query because everything is more visual when we write um, some kind of select, the framework returns us a bunch of uh, solutions predefined that we can use and 90% of the time that's enough for us. If you have some common application that we are using for some kind of presentation of website or landing page or something like that, 99% of the, the time you will not even need to write row queries. Laravel will fix your issue. But uh, please be aware that you need to learn how to do it yourselves. I'm not talking about the old guys uh, without hair, but I'm talking about the junior uh, people that uh, come here to learn something uh, new. Whew. Let me refresh myself. The beauty of uh, Docker here is that we have one uh, file for everything. So when we are talking about uh, development server and we are talking about production server, it's the, uh, the same thing. When usually we create uh, some kind of setup, we need to install bare metal setup for development purposes. Then to mimic everything that was installed in the previous server to our production uh, servers so we can then deploy the application in production. Now with Laravel, every with uh, Docker, sorry, everything works out of the box. You can just share the same Docker file and move it from one server to another server without any kind of uh, issue and it will works. You don't need to install anything else, anything more, it works. Uh, I will share now example what we need to do to build a Docker file and to have Laravel application integrated inside the Docker file. Uh, first thing that we need to know about Docker that it's using two key uh, uh, files. One is um, the Docker file itself where we specified what kind of uh, modules, plugins, what kind of image we want to build. And the second uh, file is a Docker Compose YAML file where everything lives and it's connected uh, together. So for example, 
FE1 to have an uh, image built in, uh, in Docker that runs uh, any kind of Linux distribution, regardless if it's Debian or CentOS or Linux or Ubuntu, anything that you want, you can specify that in the uh, Docker file, and then that Docker file we are calling inside the Docker YAML file to be executed and download everything to our PC, so makes the visualization. Now we are talking about Laravel, and we are uh, using uh, PHP uh, 8.3, and we are installing all system dependencies that we know that we're going to need for some Laravel uh, application. After uh, setup and everything that we need Git, we need uh, C rule of uh, sending the request, we need uh, zip, unzip, uh, nano editor that you want to call something manually, uh, xdebug or supervisor for running uh, Laravel uh, uh, queues in the backend, we can specify it here, installing xdebug or some kind of uh, uh, composer packages that are not initially part of, uh, of the image, and we can sp uh, spin a uh, Docker file image that everything lives inside. So this file image, then we can share to any kind of server, any kind of user that can just spin the containers and everything is working. And uh, to connect this to an interface so users can use it and can understand what we are doing because here everything is um, uh, put a little bit uh, hard to understand for the everyday person because this is a Linux commands, Linux installation uh, profile that we are using here to build the Docker file. In the Docker Compose YAML file, it's where that magic uh, happens. Uh, be aware if you're using the last uh, uh, version of Docker, the version specifying in the files, it's not needed anymore. But if you're using older versions of Docker, then you need to specify version 2.0, 5.0, something like that. For example, uh, first we define the application and defined what we want to do with it. To build Docker image, so this command here, build contain Docker file, is specified that we want to build the Docker Compose uh, uh, YAML file from existing Docker image that we ourselves has built. If we don't, if you want to use uh, pre built Docker image that lives on Docker Hub, we can then uh, change from build to image and then can uh, call that image to be processed. Uh, this Docker file was created for a project uh, that I'm part of it and I just reuse the image so I'm not uh, creating something from scratch, to be sincere, to be a little bit lazy. And uh, this uh, Hairy guy in front of me is copying the, the image, uh, I presume, for that reason. Okay, uh, next thing that we need to do, uh, because Docker is an application that is uh, uh, with a lot of containers, and it's built to work like that, we need to give every container a name so we can then easily move through the application and open each container if we want to do something manually inside. Because how it's built out of the box, yes, it will work. But if you want to, to open the SQL container, to open the Nginx container, or to open the PHP container, you must know the PHP name, uh, uh, container name, so you can run a specific uh, command, and you can enter those, uh, those containers. Uh, so uh, when you define the container name, we are defining a restart type. That means uh, specifying scenario when specific Docker container uh, will uh, do something that is out of everyday stuff. So container can restart itself, and you can specify a couple of reasons. If it's some kind of error, so the container stops, or the whole file breakdown, or if the uh, application itself has some kind of a major update. We are defining, I define by myself, 99% of the time, uh, 
if nobody touch anything, if nothing wrong has happened, if it's working, don't touch it. So we restart only if something, God forbid, go wrong. If it's working, leave it be. Uh, working directorium, I cannot, I don't need to, to explain to everybody, so that's mapping the uh, path where our code will live. Because um, Docker has a, uh, uh, a lot of containers and that's the approach how applications are built. We as a developers, if we want to change something in the code and we want to see what is happened on the uh, live instance of the server, we are mapping the uh, volume, we are mapping the storage where we are storing the data. So, for example, the PHP application will run from the folder var slash www. That's the work in the rooms. This is the volume where something we are mapping in the platform and we have specific configuration files what we need to do. For example, how are we gonna handle errors in the PHP? If we're using uh, xdebug, where are we gonna store specific settings for xdebug? If we are using supervisor, where the logs files of errors for supervisor will live, or where the configuration for the supervisor for some computer queue process in Laravel will live. So everything that is connected for some specific container, specific configuration that lives only in that container, we are mapping the volume. This is the part, the half of the part is where locally they live in our application. And the second half is where they are mapped into, uh, into the virtual container that is built from, from Docker itself. About the environment, every container can have specific environment. That means how we're gonna access the, that uh, container and where those, uh, which ports are open or something like that. For example, we are here we specified an xdebug uh, tool that is using for debugging uh, in PHP. Uh, to be sincere, in the last la version of Laravel, they have a, a very good debugger introduced. But in the end of the day, this is the best one that we can use to, to debug. So we are specifying how we're gonna access the, uh, the container, what is the mode of the debug, how we're gonna start it, on which port it lives, and where is the uh, log file if something's going wrong and we need to debug it to see what is happening. Uh, in this uh, application, we're gonna have second container that it's, uh, for example, for ourself, MySQL. Regardless of what we are using, that we're using MySQL or MariaDB or some other uh, image for MySQL, I prefer to use uh, predefined images. So that means that somebody that spends time smarter than me make a stable version of SQL container and we are just using with some kind of uh, additional configuration from our side because uh, it's working. People be aware that we are not the smartest people in the world. Always uh, there is somebody that is uh, more experienced and uh, uh, smarter than us. So let's use their uh, knowledge. Don't reinvent the wheel. If we have a Docker, uh, for example, for MySQL service and it's working, I don't see the point building your own. You can build your own image for MySQL, for example. If you have some kind of specific version, that's something that only you have scenario how to do it and when to do it, then yeah, you can do it yourself. But in others, I don't see other, uh, some other scenario when we're gonna do it. That's my opinion. Maybe I'm wrong, maybe I'm not. Nginx, it's a, a pandan of Apache. It's a processor for running PHP code. So it's something that uh, it's pre-built and we want to reinvent the wheel. We are specifying the image, latest version. Kao se zoomira v ovdje, li treba fonto da ga smenam?
Neke me vrlo. Ej, da, ve. Sve je okej? Okej, balja se gleda. Ah, da vam naučarite na nekako mudro. So, uh, we already spoke about uh, uh, Divi, so we now switch to Nginx, it's platform similar to Apache, a little bit quicker about static pages. I prefer to use uh, uh, Nginx to be sincere. We are using the latest image, uh, what is the stable, we restart and list it stop, we don't touch it. We are specifying port where we want to open. So this means 8000, it's a port in your browser, in your laptop, and you try to access the web page. And 80 port is port of the virtual server container that Docker is building. And uh, for example, I am storing the code of my application where the Docker file lives, so I don't have additional parameters. And we map the same directory as in the Docker file. And this is the same method where we are storing specific config files for the Nginx, for example. The Nginx itself, you can specify how to open some application. Everybody knows that Laravel has a public directorium where everything needs to be load. Sorry, let me zoom. Okay. So this is a config file for Nginx server. We are specifying the port where we want to listen. I changed the name. Uh, we have a domain name where you want to uh, uh, open the, the application, access to the error logs, and some predefined configuration about how much uh, megabytes you can upload, and a ready red path that we are running Laravel application be because uh, without this part here, let me zoom out, uh, every page of Laravel that it's not in the root will not work. It will not redirect where it needs to go. So that's the config for, uh, the simple config for, for uh, uh, Nginx. You can here start and adding, building the, the file with uh, caching. For example, you want to cache some images or um, CSS, JavaScript code, something that to be stored inside uh, the cache of the browser of the user, so we have better performance. We can everything specified here, or we can uh, do it uh, on global le uh, level to, if you have multi uh, Nginx websites, you can set up in one global command to cache everything. Ooh. Okay. So, uh, that's for, for Nginx. We can use Redis. I presume that everybody else use Redis for caching. That it's a server that cache uh, SQL queries and return to the user static content, so you not ping every day uh, the database, and you have a lot of uh, a lot of better performance. So I don't uh, duplicate myself for everything. Everything that uh, was said about Nginx and database. Uh, regarding to the names of the containers and the images is the same. This is the port of uh, Redis public and inside port, and we are mapping the volumen. Initially, uh, when I started building Docker images, I was mapping folders for my project where the uh, file, uh, files will live to the volumen. Now, this is the modern approach. I was uh, told from some colleagues of mine that I need to change my uh, way of thinking that uh, I need to uh, evaluate. So I moved to using, from mapping uh, hard uh, files to using volumens, and that's a good approach. And something else that I sh want to share, this is mail search, it's uh, uh, the same. This is something that a calling of our others asked me, uh, Docker is built to be multi-platform application, but for some images that are built uh, for us on Docker are not able to be multi-platform. For example, uh, PHP MyAdmin uh, container, it's not working out of the box on M1 or M2 CPUs of Mac. And if you try to 
Randy issue, something like this one. Let me comment to that part and call the terminal. It will twirl an error that it's not compatible. I, yeah. So it says that it's not matching platform. If we want to enforce matching platform with Linux, we can specify the platform command that tells the uh, emulator, it tells the, the engine to run that uh, container in a, a platform mode that is compatible and it will run now. But be aware, when we are using some image in uh, some kind of compiler uh, mode and uh, it's translating so it works in your platform, it's very slow. I presume that PHP admin is something that we not nobody use every day. Uh, I think so, I prefer to use the terminal line. But uh, uh, be aware if you do something like this, yeah, this uh, platform key is fixing our issue. The application will run and will work, but it will be a lot slower. Because first, you need to translate everything to uh, understandable language for your platform, then to run the code. And you can see that for every other container, the uh, resource issue is uh, around, for example, 500 megabytes of RAM memory. And for this uh, uh, platform only, it's using two gigs. So when you're, you're working at home, yeah, it's not an issue because you have 16 or 32 gigs of, of RAM and it's working like a charm because you are sending one query and you're checking only your stuff. But if you put this public and you have uh, 10,000 users that want to access that, kind, that service, you're going to have uh, an issue. So please be aware when you're using. And at the end of the uh, Docker file, uh, you need to specify network. So when you have a lot of containers and we need to communicate between, so you want to, to listen to uh, SQL, to listen to Nginx, to listen to Redis, they must live, they must uh, live in the same network. If they are not in the same network, they cannot connect to each other and you have an issue. So you define the network name and uh, you define the driver, how they are connecting to each other, and after that, uh, you just specify that network ne name on every container. In the end of the day, uh, you are just uh, mapping all the volumes that you want to have, because having volumes means that, especially it's good that for, for development, if you're sitting in some kind of database, uh, you don't need to redo it every day, because if you have map that in the volume, uh, destroy the containers or build the containers again, the data is there. It's not something that can be deleted. You can delete it, of course, but uh, out of the box, it's there, it's present, and you have access to your data every day, uh, whenever you want. So that's my understanding how we need to build a simple Docker image. So we can uh, put do a lot of uh, uh, images here. We can have a multiple Docker composed files that are uh, joined together, but that's something that it's more advanced and it depends of every case. It's not something that is globally uh, done. If you want to join uh, multiple uh, uh, containers uh, in same application with using different composed files, that's its uh, case specific and we can discuss if somebody is uh, interesting about that. Uh, yes, but uh, at the moment, I don't see point uh, moving your attention somewhere that doesn't need to go. So uh, I think that uh, ooh, it was interesting. And people stop, start asking some questions because now I see myself as a teacher and it's not good feeling. Thank you, Zoran. Thank you for sharing your insights with us. Uh, anybody wants to ask a question, we'll pass around the microphone, so feel free. 
Айде бе, гълъмете. It's not hard, it's not uh, painful, nobody will judge you, I'm not the smartest man in the world, so maybe I will learn something from you, please ask something. Any questions? If you have. If you don't, we're gonna go to it. Yeah, uh, yeah sure. great talk, not much of a question other than that, uh, just so you know, there's another really cool feature about, uh, about Docker that you can make use of, and uh, as Zoran said in the beginning, sorry, I, I feel like there's a feedback loop, but um, as Zoran said in the beginning, it's especially useful for setting up development environments and stuff like that, and, and um, one really cool feature about that is actually that Visual Studio Code, for example, has full support for, uh, you know, how you can actually remote in and work on another PC via SSH. Well, you can do that as well with uh, something that's called development containers. So, theoretically, you can even have your whole development environment mirrored in Docker. So you can define all of the dependencies that you need, not just for production, but also for the development environment. Yeah, for that's example, the point. If, we start from the yeah. development edition and move to production because exactly. you fix your project, you code, you spend a year, and it's working. It's now it's time to see the light of the day. And just to move it to production, you copy the Docker file, you copy the doc Docker Compose YAML file, put it on server, run yeah. Docker Compose up, Minus D, detach, and the job is done. Pretty much. And uh, sorry about that. That's good. Ah, the feature, please ask something. <laughs> yeah, just wanted to say, uh, development sure. containers, really cool. And uh, it actually integrates completely with the IDE and stuff like that. So yeah, uh, that's maybe another topic for another time, but uh, sure. really cool, yeah. Uh, yeah, so what do you think are the drawbacks of virtualization and Docker style development? Oof, uh, <laughs> Yeah, <laughs> I, I, to be sincere, expect that you ask that. So, um, to be sincere, um, we have pros and cons. When you have a bare metal servers, that means that you have one big computer here and you set up Debian or any kind of uh, OS and install everything on it. Yeah, you have a monolith that you cannot move so easily and cannot migrate to another platform. But in performance issue, it will always be quicker than any kind of Docker application. Because in the end of the day, Docker needs to run and then needs to interpret something to give you results. And when you have a bare metal server, everything lives here in the server at the moment live and just rendering back everything that you pass to it. So except the performance issue, I don't see point people now using bare metal and uh, not using Docker. Yeah, so I'd l I would just like to add that when using it with MacBooks, M3s, uh, the new ARM processors, it's uh, way slower than an Intel-based. So yep. have, have that in mind when you develop applications. Yeah. Because uh, when we are using uh, M3, M1, M2, they have their own silicon-based chips and they're 10 times quicker than Intel. Uh, now Ryzen is better than Intel, to be sincere. But 90% uh, of the servers in the world don't use silicon. I don't think so that at uh, the moment we have some, somebody that provides silicon uh, servers. Uh, I think Hessner provides, but I'm not sure. AWS too. Yeah, okay. Yeah, so AWS has the Graviton platform. But uh, yeah, uh, in general, the cool thing is you can also, when you specify the base images, when, when you set up your CI, Theoretically, you can also make it, at least the major platforms actually provide different images for ARM64 and uh, AMD64. Uh, so theoretically, if all of the dependencies that you have actually support ARM64, theoretically it should run about the same or even more, uh, even better than AMD, uh, the, the uh, x64 architecture on an M1. But that's only assuming that uh, the, uh, the base yeah. images actually support for that, and as we saw. Yeah. PHP my admin doesn't. Uh, for time, uh, the PHP my admin is something that it's a very easy thing that you can put aside. Not everybody use it, not everybody need it. But many of the, the libraries that we are using uh, at the moment, hardly using at the moment, does not have silicon support. So yeah, it's quicker, but we need some more time to go to go there so we can use it. But yeah, I agree with, with your opinion.
<laughs> sure. <laughs> yep. Okay, thank you. Uh, you write a command, docker compose up minus minus build. Yep. Uh, I don't know, I mean, I know what I'm asking, but for the others who don't know, yeah. what it would be the same exact thing in a bare metal machine? Uh, if you want to compare uh, Docker commands with bare setup, for example, when you run uh, Docker compose uh, uh, up minus D detach minus minus build, that means that it's uh, rebuilding, reinstalling every package from scratch. That means that uh, if you want to translate to bare metal, uh, Ramarofa delete the whole server and start everything from scratch. So that's very good when uh, changing, updating stuff and then rebuild yeah. everything. And if you, uh, for example, uh, in early days, if you want to switch a uh, PHP version, for example, uh, in bare metal server, you need to open the terminal line and up at the get uh, update, up at the get uh, installed PHP version, the newer one, if it's a uh, uh, repository is available, if it's not, you need to install the new repository so Linux kernel can find it and install uh, the PHP version. And you are always uh, under stress that something can break during the install process. If you don't have a backup that you can restore, you're in a very bad position because you break down your system. And you want to switch, for example, in Docker PHP version for something, you just open the Docker file, and here I have specified PHP and point three FPM version. This is the way how to download the version to similar version. That's it. You just run PHP or run Docker Compose up minus minus build. It will run the slow, uh, slower, older version of PHP 8.2. If you have some kind of hiccups, some kind of error, you can just uh, control Z, go back to the previous version, rerun the common, and the project is up and running. Yes, That's and the beauty that you have uh, virtualization. Uh, when you see, put those things uh, in, uh, uh, in the same plate, yeah, I prefer to use Docker. Yes, and for the people who don't uh, use Docker, and I urge them to start using it, uh, it would be the same with virtual machines. Yeah, exactly. They use a lot of more. Uh, when you set up a virtual machine, for example, use uh, uh, some of the uh, already present VMware or some kind of uh, studio for virtualization, uh, you are creating a virtual machine from a whole. Uh, I will talk about Linux because I don't have a clue about Windows. The last time that I was using Windows, it was 7. So I'm a little, little bit out of date. Yeah, because now Dota can be played on, Lin on Linux and uh, uh, Mac, so I'm covered in that uh, department. Uh, so when you're creating a virtualization in VMware, you are copying the whole operating system and putting uh, inside a virtual image. And then on it, you are building additional applications that you need to use. When you're talking about Docker, you have a, a bare uh, metal uh, instance of kind, some kind of operating system that it's only uh, uh, left with the parts that are network specified. So everything that you have, for example, uh, Ubuntu, everything that is connected with graphics, with game or with something like that, it's removed from the platform. And you have maybe 200 of memory of a Linux operating system that it's only network specified. Yeah, it's used for web servers, etc. And you use that image to build. So you have low space, low performance, um, requirements, not low, low performance of the image, but you need a lot of small amount, uh, uh, a lot small amount of RAM or CPU to run the, that image. Yeah, it's very easy, and uh, and as you write uh, Docker Compose up, you can go Docker Compose stop, and then go in another project, start yeah, it yeah, again, and or you can have up. a multiple uh, uh, projects in the same time, just specified the port, external port when you listen. For example, uh, at the moment how I specified my service, I don't, don't use anymore any kind of setup initial of the server. So I uh, have a bare metal server, install Docker on it, and install Nginx, two applications. 
I specified, I built every container that I need, every kind of application, website, et cetera, that I have on the server. I put everything online and just open uh, Docker uh, Nginx config file, the config file that I shared previously, and just specified, okay, when we have domain hello.test, listen to uh, port 80, double uh, quotes, internal port will be 35,000. Okay, environmental variable, it can be. And you, and you fix the issue. So you don't have any kind of installation anymore. Now, uh, if you want to have more than one web server, you need to go to Nginx to uh, site available to create a config file for every domain, etc. Uh, and yeah, it's using the same uh, resource, but you do everything manually. Now here we can, or use Docker proxy, for example, that's something more advanced that makes our life very easy if you want to have more than one web page on one server. Your line number 10 is making me crazy because it should be, yeah, <laughs> to the left a little bit. Ah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, to the left, huh? I mean, mm -hmm. if there is somebody else who wants to ask questions. It's enough. <laughs> yeah, I have a lot, but it's for the other time maybe. A few more. A few more. Feel free. Feel free. Uh, have you worked with two applications connected, for example, API in one Docker file and then you start another application? Yep. Uh, so if you want to have a... Uh, more than one application. You want to use single Docker fan or to use multi Docker no, no, more, fans. more, more. Yep, uh, it's very, Docker give us the, the freedom to do that. So for example, you have uh, one application that it's PHP and you have this setup and you have a front end application that it's built in Vue.js, Brick, something like that. So you create a, a Docker container specific for that file. Uh, or it's better to show you. I don't have any React application, but. It can be any other, any application with um, different Docker, Docker Compose files. Yeah. Uh, let me find the application, some, some of the projects. I'm 90% of the time backend developer, so I don't have any uh, React or some front end application in my side, but uh, the scenario is this. You have uh, your own the React Docker image, when you specified uh, that every uh, request that is coming to your Docker image, it will, for retrieving data, for example, it will redirect to the uh, container name of your PHP application. That way, uh, Docker knows how to uh, move that incoming traffic from your Docker Node.js application to your PHP backend. And it's easier with React. Uh, for example, I'm working now on uh, Symfony API and then I'm connecting with Laravel application as tools or something similar. Uh, what needs to be uh, the same in both applications? The network. The network. Uh, that's the only, the only you way connect them and then. If you want the, them to speak, to see each other, the name for the network must be the same. So they live on the same network. Everything else you can move, play ports, open, close, everything else, but then, because that's the only point of truth how they will know that they are living in the same environment and then can have access to each other. For example, you 99% of the Redis server or the SQL server is closed for outside uh, uh, traffic. They only have inside port open that application will use, but they must live on the same network. Uh, yes, okay, just just a comment, and when you connect all of this with Kubernetes, then it's like no limits in automatization no. and everything. The scaling of the application, it's uh, we, yeah. without any Switches, boundaries. Switches, uh, turning on workers and something. Uh, you can uh, specify it, for example, if you have a, a want to scale uh, an application inside the one bare metal server, you can specify the number of cores, number of RAMs. If the, the, reach is, uh, the, the limit is reached, 
scale another application, another application, and that doesn't have any end of it. Because they always scale the same application, scale the uh, same settings, same configuration, and it's working. Thank you. Yeah, sure. Somebody else to ask something, or it's beer time? Fico does not bring any rakia, so 